remarks. Your parliamentary representative, please put your hands together and welcome the Honourable Cameron of Staff. Good evening. What a wonderful day this is, eh? They say good things come to those. Yes. And we have waited long, but it has been worth the wait. And when you have the opportunity to go inside and walk through this facility, you will understand what a magnificent facility it is and why we had to wait and why it was worth the wait. I, I want to thank and recognize um, the Honorable Prime Minister, Members of Parliament, the Honorable Attorney General, His Excellency Ambassador Gur, Members uh, Pastor King, uh, a former Representative Clayton Bergen. It was very important for Clayton to be here today because so much of this building we owe to the perseverance, to quote the Razam song, of former Representative Borgin, and we thank him for that. <laughs> the former Senator Dr. Linton Lewis, who despite political differences, has always recognized the value of this facility and, and wished it well, and we thank him for his tacit support of it as well. And most importantly, all of the residents of Kalekwa and the surrounding communities who have come to see this wonderful moment come to fruition. I want to make a special recognition and thanks for all of the talented young people um, who we've heard today so far and we will hear before the, the day is over. You know, there, there's always a lot of talk about the trouble that young people get into and the trouble that young people do and never enough recognition of the talent and creativity and energy of young people. And we've seen today just a small example so far with Chanel and Darren and the young children from Fair Hall and we still have Epic Sounds Steel Orchestra to come. Because this is a celebration and I'm trying to turn it into a party um, as much as we can. A few years ago, I made the point that we have within us the ability, the residents of East St. George, to make this constituency and the communities within it the best place to live and work and play in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And everybody says my constituency is the best, but we have special gifts and special talents here in this community that we must recognize. And I made the point that when the Argyle International Airport opens, and it's open now, but I'm taking you back a couple of years, that when the Argyle International Airport opens, Kaliakwa in particular would have special potential to grow and develop as a community, and to be an engine for growth and development in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Because when the tourist leaves Argyle, the first real town, Gustus, the first real town that they will encounter on their way. Many of the tourists who come from Argyle won't even reach Kingston. They will stay at the Blue Lagoon in, in out by Kanash 
which is expanding to take advantage of this, or the Kanash Beach Apartments, which are expanding to take advantage of this, or down in Villa, they might stay by Beach Comas, which is expanding to take advantage of this, and they will want Hotel Alexandrina, which is expanding as well. The Trinity Medical School, many of them will come to go there, which is expanding. You see, you see a trend? There is a renaissance happening in the area. Or maybe they will want to have a bite at a new restaurant, Four Shells, which is right outside on the road here, making the best fish in the country. <laughs> Or maybe they will want to have a drink by Mangoes, which is at Villa, but is a brand new restaurant that has opened. And maybe they will want to buy a few things, like Tony's supermarket or the new Randy's. And right here, there will be no need, they go buy Duggan's to have a drink. There will be no need for that tourist to even go beyond <laughs> where we are now, if they want to have a good time. And that is the vision that led to the cleaning up of the Kanash Beach, removing all the wrecks and boats from there. And that is the vision that led to the improvement of the Calico playing field. Remember just a little while ago, the fence was falling down into the road that was repaired. The hard court was resurfaced. The dirt road that went down by the fish market is now a paved road. And we recognize the tremendous potential that exists in this community because not only of its location, but of its unique people. That this location is special to the future growth and development of the entire country. So we have to invest in it. But when we invest in it, we don't invest in it, because I just talked about all the tourists, you think I invested in it for the tourists? No, we invest in it for the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, the people of East St. George and the people of Calicoa. And this facility is a recognition and a manifestation of the investment that we're putting in the community of Calico and surrounding areas. We have all recognized that this is a close-knit and active community. It's a genuine community here in Calico. And Clayton and everybody else has listed many of the talented and outstanding Calicotarians and Vincentians that have risen up from this area. And when you have a tight-knit community, you have to facilitate that. You have to grow that. You have to give them a locale that is befitting the exuberance and the energy and the creativity and the talent that this community has always manifested. And that is what we have here in this Calico Town Hall. It is a two and a half million dollar facility. Right here, two and a half million dollars. And when you have the opportunity to come inside, and I encourage everybody who is outside to come inside, we have some snacks up there as well for you, to Look at it closely and understand that it is money well spent. And you will see every dollar of that two and a half million dollars in this facility. And it is unique as a facility in St. Vincent and the Grenadines and probably unique in much of the wider Caribbean. Where else in this country do you have in one building a magistrate court? a post office, a daycare center, a town board office, a wonderful town hall for performances and speeches and the like, a computer room, 
and the library. All in one building in the heart of your community. Nowhere else in St. Vincent and the Grenadines can boast a building with all of those facilities in one place. And I, I dare say I don't know, I've traveled around the Caribbean, I don't know if I've ever seen another building elsewhere in the Caribbean that can say all of those essential community services are located in a single place. And the building, the town hall, as we're calling it now, and I support Clayton, maybe we need to start looking for new names for it because it's so much more than a town hall, is unique in other ways. And I want to point out just two of those ways that it is unique. Those of you who live here in Calicua will notice that we just paved and smoothed the road in Culture Park Square. And the way in which we sold and convinced the Honorable Minister Francis on this, because he's busy doing work all over the country. I want to thank him as we're here for the road going up to Glen. Yes. I want to thank him for the road going up to Fay Hall. Yes. I want to thank him for the piece of road they're doing in Rattle Mill. Yes. And I want to thank him for the road they're about to begin. Um, in Brighton, in Revere, in Rivulet, and going up to the medical school. But the way, the way that we were able to convince him about Culture Park Square was that I said that square is an extension of this community calico as well. It is the outdoor portion of this indoor facility because that is where we're going to play small bowl football on New Year's Day. Right? And that is where we have Kiddies Carnival. And that is where when Pastor King had a, a youth crusade last week, he set up his tent right there in the square and that is where of course culture part took place and other cultural activities took place so that is the outdoor portion yes we have this wall area here but that is the outdoor portion of this community center because the community has always gathered and always bonded right around the corner so i see the two of them as part and parcel of one whole and of course the playing field and the hard court is all part of the community, but, but I see a direct linkage between this facility and that square right out there. So that is one unique area. When people talk, when you want to brag about your town hall, you say also, and we have a square, you know. Yeah. We have a square right there where you go play football and all kind of things. You brag about it. Because that is part also, as I see it, of this facility. And the other way that we are unique and it's, it's a little technical but I want you to bear with me. I'll try to simplify it um, from a technical perspective and in doing that I want to recognize some members who are associated with my ministry. I want to recognize the ITSD and I want to recognize Apollo Knights, the head of the MTRC. That's telecommunications. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about IT because that's my ministry. I learned something from the Honorable Prime Minister when he was opening a playing field in South Rivers. When he was opening the playing field in South Rivers, I noticed the playing field had lights. And I said, well, I didn't know village fields got night lights. And he said, well, he said, you see, there's a reason. He said, South Rivers Plain Field is located next to a hydro plant. And because there's a hydro plant there, they get cheap electricity. And because they get cheap electricity, they could get lights on the plain field. Nothing to do with the fact that he's a representative for North Central Greenway. So I learned from him. I'm the Minister of IT. And while every other Town Hall, Learning Resource Centre and School in St. Vincent and the Grenadines gets their internet to an old style copper wire connection. Copper. I noticed that just like South Rivers was close to a hydro plant, this town hall is close to the Coast Guard station. 
and the Coast Guard station doesn't have an old-fashioned fiber um, copper connection. They have modern fiber that brings internet faster and more reliably than you get it in your house. So I said on the Gonzales principle <laughs> that if you are close to an asset, you can tee off a piece. I asked the NTRC not to use limes, flows, copper that comes to your houses here, but to run a piece of fiber from the Coast Guard station to this facility. As a result, this facility has faster, more reliable internet than any other school or learning resource center in St. Vincent and the Grand And it has nothing to do with the fact that I am the representative of East St. George. The, I want to thank the NTRC for assisting because he, Apollo Knights and, and, and um, ITSD as well, they connected the computers in this room, they connected the fiber, they tested it. Whereas schools have a particular speed to access, we will have twice that speed. And whereas every other learning resource center has what they call one external access point, one antenna, I made the same point to Apollo that I made to you just now, that the square over there is part of this building. So internet has to be accessible not only in this building, but all around this building. And the young people, if you look, you will see antennas on the outside of this building pointing outwards. So you can get internet across the street, down into the square, and on this side of the building. And the young people have already figured that out. <laughs> because Apollo gave me some notes here that said that last week, over 4, thousand unique devices access the internet using this facility <laughs> and over 100 gigabytes not bytes not kilobytes not megabytes but gigabytes of data was poured out of a closed building <laughs> nobody was in here but over 100 gigabytes of data was already used by the young people and i talked to them the other day i saw all of them with their phone they said i know the internet coming from but we are internet. <laughs> and I want to thank, again, that has nothing to do with my representational capacity, only with the fact that I happen to be the Minister of IT. And I think that the young people will utilize the town hall, not only in the building, in the computer lab, but out here on the streets and in the square. And I say more power to them for that. You have some of that in town. The, the facility, and, and I, don't want to, I don't want to speak much longer, but the, the facility clearly indicated that we must keep it pristine, that we must respect it, and I agree. This is a multi-million dollar facility. We have to respect it. We have to recognize that we as a community waited long for it, and we have to treat it with love and respect. But I don't want it to become a mausoleum. I don't want us to lock it up. I want it to throb with the energy of Calico. I want it to feel the energy of this community. I want there to be classes here to teach young people. I want there to be dramatic productions in the town hall area, music performances. I want the I want us to come and see the children from, from Miss Young's um, preschool giving us performances here. I want us to use it. Let us not make it become the magistrate court. Let us not make it become the post office. Let us not make it become a preschool, a daycare. Let us not make it become a computer lab where you take classes. Let it be greater than the sum of its individual parts. You have a unique facility. We have built it, we have furnished it, we have stocked it, we have connected it. All that is missing now is you. So please, once this is open, understand that this is your facility. 
We want you to respect it, but we want you most of all to use it. Thank you very much, and I appreciate your time. I think you would need to.